Gary Pfizer, a content marketing manager at Cisco, posted this blog entry on the Cisco Learning Network. He writes, STN, do you need encouragement getting with the program? He says that at last month's Cisco Live conference in Las Vegas, close to 100 sessions were offered talking about either SDN or Software Defined Networking, Network Programmability, Network Automation, or the Cisco APEC EM controller. In addition, there were more than 150 sessions provided by DevNet. That's a lot of sessions and a lot of content. So he asks, are you excited, perhaps overwhelmed? And he says that the sheer number of Cisco Live sessions devoted to this topic is evidence that the SDN ship has sailed. Now, Cisco's definition of SDN equates to network programmability or network automation. Now, he says, why is SDN a big deal for you as the network engineer? And he gives five reasons here amongst many greater speed and faster delivery of services, accuracy and reliability, simplicity, ability to optimize the network, and better analytics. There's a drive towards network programmability, network automation, and SDN. And he says that Cisco have produced a white paper called Demystifying SDN for the Network Engineer. This is a free white paper that you can download you will need to register on the right-hand side of this page to download the white paper. So simply fill in your details, click Submit, and then click Download to download the document. So this white paper from Cisco is titled Demystifying SDN for the Network Engineer. Now, like all white papers and documents like this, you need to decide for yourself if you believe what they're talking about. But they say here that on the IT horizon, there's a change gathering force that is difficult for network engineers to ignore. Software defined networking promises to be a big change. And those network engineers surveying the waters recognize that it is no simple blip on the radar. So basically, they are saying that you should move towards SDN and not try and hide from it. Now, before going any further, notice that they define that SDN is also known as network programmability and network automation. Now, in many of my videos, I discuss different visions or versions of software-defined networking. Companies such as HPE, or Big Switch Networks, or the Open Networking Foundation have a different perspective to Cisco as to what SDN is. But from Cisco's point of view, SDN is network programmability or network automation. And personally, I think that OpenFlow is not that important anymore. I would concentrate, if I were you, on network automation and network programmability. Follow this path. You don't necessarily only need to learn about this, but I think it's really important, especially if you work with Cisco devices. They firstly talk about how changes in your blood. Old network engineers like me can remember how technologies have changed. Now, without making you laugh, I remember the days of analog modems connected to Cisco routers dialing up to each other. So rather than having Ethernet connections between routers for WAN connections, we had modems. And I would configure one modem to talk to another modem. And I'd need to learn what the sounds that a modem made meant. So that's many years ago. And thank goodness I don't have to work with analog modems anymore. But to the moral of the story is, depending how long you've been in networking, you've probably noticed only one constant in networking. And that is change. The only constant is change. Everything is changing. So the biggest skill I think that you can learn is to learn. Learn to learn and apply what you've learned. And that's a very good way to make yourself marketable 
and ensure that you stay relevant and get better job opportunities. Keep on learning. That's kind of what they're saying here. And they talk about how things are changing in networking today. And then they talk about the traditional router and how it's changing. So in a traditional router, we have a management plane, which is traditionally the CLI. We have the control plane, which is typically populated by a routing protocol, such as OSPF. That populates the IP routing table, which is pushed down to the forwarding table in hardware. So as an example, OSPF routes are pushed down into the FIB or forwarding information base of a router. Every router makes its own decision. Routing is done on the per hop paradigm. Every router makes its own individual decision on how traffic should be forwarded. Now Cisco talking about the programmable network. Networks will now be programmable rather than configuring networks through the CLI, we're gonna use controllers. So instead of using the CLI, you'll use a GUI provided by a controller that then applies configurations to multiple network devices. So we have applications such as EasyQoS or PathTrace or other third-party applications that use the northbound API to talk to the controller, which uses various southbound protocols to talk to network devices. Northbound API is typically REST. Southbound APIs are typically CLI, SNMP, or NetConf. But there are many southbound protocols that you could use. This document gives you some examples of the APEC EM, showing you the path trace utility, where you can quickly and visually see where traffic is being blocked in your network. They talk about the QoS application to provide easy QoS. And then they point to you to some training available on the Cisco website. Now what's interesting is Cisco are quoting Gartner. In a separate video, which I've linked below, I talk about this Gartner report and how Gartner are predicting that by 2020, only 30% of network operations will rely on the CLI as their primary interface, which is down from 85% at the end of 2016. So this Gartner document discusses the death of the CLI and the rise of APIs. So what should you learn? So some skills that I would recommend that you learn. Learn a bit about Python. Attend my Python for Network Engineers course. Learn the basics of Python scripting. Learn how to think a bit like a programmer. Also learn Ansible. As an example, attend my Ansible for Network Engineers course and learn the basics of Ansible. Once you understand the power of Ansible and Python, you'll very quickly see why configuring network devices through the CLI doesn't make a lot of sense when you have many network devices. It doesn't make sense to tell it to individual devices and configure individual parameters as a human being. Rather have a single source of truth. In other words, have a master configuration that you then apply to network devices using automation. Make sure that your network devices are configured consistently through this single source of truth. Don't rely on humans to configure individual network devices. Let machines do that. Also learn about APIs, such as REST APIs. Learn a little bit about controllers, such as the Cisco APEC EM controller. This is the future. Cisco and other vendors are pushing towards automation, network programmability, and software-defined networking. It's now important not just for a network engineer to know the basics of IP, know the basics of networking. They need to learn new skills, which I believe includes programming, even if it's just fundamental scripting with Python. They need to learn Ansible. They need to learn about REST APIs and perhaps other protocols such as NetConf. If you're getting started, learn the basics of networking. You've got to have a foundation, so you must understand networking. So learn at least the basics of networking, then learn a bit of Python, learn Ansible, learn a bit about APIs. The future is exciting. 
Just remember, if you're a new network engineer, don't be disheartened by the amount of stuff that you need to learn. Let me ask you the question, what does it help me today to understand what an analog modem is doing when it makes certain sounds? Those skills are irrelevant in today's world. The only constant is change. The biggest skill that you can learn is to learn. Learn to read, learn to learn, learn to apply your knowledge. Keep on learning. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.